Hello, I'm Phil Davis. And I'm Jared Hanslow. And we are here to reminisce about our time at Lake Argyle. We'll be talking about the goals prior to Lake Argyle, the first few days, the last few days, the growing friendships that were made, and did we achieve those goals that we set out? Yeah, so we'll get straight into this. Jared, please tell me, before you went to the lake, how were you feeling? What did you think was going to happen? Well, I was feeling great, you know. I've always been an outdoors type of person, and um, my goals for the lake and how I was feeling, were, well, they were positive, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to help inspire people and make their days better on it. Yeah. Um, That's good. Uh, being in the elite up squad, I knew that we could make it, and um, I knew that we would have a good time. Mm. So, the Elite Alpha Squad, please tell me how that name came around because it still tickles me to this day. Well, um, the Elite Alpha Squad was made during class to split the two groups apart and um, the Elite Alpha Squad ended up getting the kayaks and that's how it's made. And all yeah. the friendships that were already in there, you know, would grow stronger over this trip. Yeah, I completely get that. So... For me, goal-wise and everything, it was a bit strange because uh, I didn't know anyone in my group other than uh, Fabian. So I'd only known the guy for just over a month anyway. So it was, it was kind of tough for me to come into the group, but uh, you guys made me feel very welcome. Definitely got to know some cool people out there like yourself, Jared. Oh. So what were your goals for the trip? Uh, my goals were to get to know you guys really well. I'm going to be in your class for a while now, so just take those baby steps to knowing you all and everything, and then uh, just, I don't know, come home and say, I can go out into Australia without a phone or anything like that, you know, out bush, and do it, which I, prior to the event, I probably thought I couldn't do, so yeah, that was definitely my goal. But, um, so we'll go on to the first few days now. So we started as a bit of a mixed bunch, you know, you guys were all like close, you knew who each other were, and then these two volunteers came along, and then you've got the teacher and Christian. What were you feeling about the group? Well, you know, I didn't really notice the gappies much, I mean, not at first anyway. Um, we're just hanging out with a group that would normally uh, normally would, but yeah. as you could see over the, over the trip, you know, friendship groups grew and um, yeah, you started talking to other people that you wouldn't normally, so then I started talking to you, you know, yeah. on, the, on about Thursday, I think it was, and it was real good. Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, me and Jared had a uh, little paddle together, uh, spoke about uh, our families and things like that, and definitely bonded and, you know get on really well, don't we, buddy? Yeah, we do. Um, what what perks do you reckon, like, what what helped you throughout the camp? Because I know my hammock, you know, and me bringing... Oh, yeah. My hammock would save my life out there. Yeah. And um, bringing a fishing rod, the only one to do it, because I'm my age myself. Uh, that really helped me out. What about you? What what helped you? Um, I'm going to just give a little shout-out to uh, Fabian, probably. Because, uh, it, as I said, it was a bit tough, you know, coming into the group at the start. So just having a little break and then going over to see the guy, have a chat, see how each other are going. Because we were in the same boat, metaphorically, if you don't mind me saying, Jared. I know you like a joke. Um, and... <laughs> well... <Yeah. laughs> so, yeah, probably, um, probably Fabian. Uh, and then just... Thinking about how much I wanted to achieve, um, like conquering Lake Argyle, and yeah, just really drive myself to get there. That probably kept me going quite quite a lot as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, what were you like? What what held you back? You know, I mean, I know mine was days without my hammock because you know, there was no trees around, and. Uh, <laughs> That really <laughs> got me down. But yeah. Every time we went to a campsite, this guy looks at all the trees and he's shouting across the lake, oh, guys, are there any good trees for hammocks there? 
Oh no, we can't camp there if there's no good trees for hammocks. Well, we just can't, now can you? <laughs> oh, now, um, do you reckon your friendship groups grew on that trip? Um, definitely, yeah. So, coming in, didn't really know what to think. And uh, then I started paddling with you guys and talking about just life in general and family and school and everything and just realizing how down to earth you guys are and you're just so easy to get on with so yeah definitely um bonded with some good people out there one thing that really helped me is you know the national anthems that we're singing out there oh yeah that was an amazing time i mean you had to be there but yeah um what what did you think of the, you know, the amazing things we had there, like the shooting stars, the crocs, the openness of the lake, the beauty of it, the luscious water? <laughs> oh, there's a little dig of my story there. Okay, so... Go um, read your story if you want to know what that means. Yeah, so I've written a story about Lake Argyle, spoken about the luscious Argyle water. Right, so... Shooting star-wise, I've probably seen... I think I've seen one in my lifetime uh, prior to Argar. Now, I, prob I don't know. I must have seen about a good seven or eight there. I definitely saw more shooting stars than people. Oh. Yeah. That's saying something for how <laughs> open and vast and just abandoned the lake is. I mean, if it wasn't for the people there, I mean, the friendship groups I made and, you know, she he joined that, yeah. and um, it would have been so, so lonely, but, you know. Yeah, but it was pretty cool, like, at night, you could lie on the tarp, and then uh, look up at the stars, and just one would just fly by. And, yeah, it just, I don't know, it just makes your mind go blank, I guess, because you just start to appreciate everything a bit more when you see something as cool as that happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, there's also some uh, weird conversations about meanings of words in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. You had some, it was just, you had to be there to experience it. I mean, you got to learn a lot more about people and, you know, what was happening in their lives, just being out, being out together for seven days was really, really amazing. Yeah, yeah it was kind of strange just lying on a tarp of, I don't know, certain people that you don't really know as well as you'd like to or yeah, whatever and then you just look up at the sky there'll be loads of stars and then you just start talking about random things but you just don't care and just a lot of emotion comes out at the time yeah it does but um yeah so crocs how many crocs did we see out there well i almost got eaten by one i'm not gonna lie uh old mate threw a had a catfish on his line and um we saw a croc surface probably like a two meter easy Fresh to surface, and I was in a single kayak, and um, he threw his catfish that was hooked on there. He couldn't get off over to the croc, and um, his line just started tugging and tugging, and the croc like literally bursted right next to me, like a meter away, and man, that thing was bigger than my kayak. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, that the crocs out there, they're big. I mean, so what we're we talking two meters? Two meters easy. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Just, no, nah, mate, I'm out. Yeah, just paddle as fast as I could. Just go yeah. on. <laughs> so um, it's weird for me because coming from uh, an English background, I'm used to the more you know, scary kind of animals like, you know, the sheep and <laughs> the pig. But I've never seen a croc in my life. And wow, that's a pretty cool moment when you see your first croc. You're like, oh, that's actually what a croc is, you know. So. Yeah, were you there for when we went out and held the baby ones on the shore? I sadly was not. No, so talk me through that. Okay, well, uh, we went out, just like a couple of us, and um, we ended up uh, flashlighting a couple of crocs, and there was like, uh, there was a medium sized one at first, and we were walking along the bank, and um, yeah. we just looked for the eye shines. And um, we saw this one's pretty, what, 80, 80 centimeter little croc, and um, uh, I think it was Connor. Connor tried to run up and grab it, but you know he's not that fast. So 
Oh. He's a bit slow, mentally okay. and physically, but um, anyway, <laughs> um, we continued on and um, we saw a probably what 30 centimetre little croc and we just walked up really slowly to it and we just grabbed it up and it was an amazing experience, you know, just to hold a little croc in your hand that you caught, you know, and um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty good, you know, and after mm. we came back to camp, it gave some, gave some of us, uh, you know, gave us that bond together, you know, that we've, we've done that together, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly remember Mr. Perry talking about one night, I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday, uh, we were at our campsite, tried to go to sleep, and there was a croc a good uh, 20 metres away from him, slapping its tail during the night, just making sure that he knew it was there, which is pretty yeah, pretty uh, cool, but I guess terrifying at the same time. So, we'll, uh, we'll go on to motivation now. So you're going to uh, Friday, Saturday time, arms are aching, you're getting tired, you're starting to think about home a little bit more. Even though you've really enjoyed the camp, you know, starting to struggle maybe that little bit more. What are you feeling? How are you keeping motivated? Well... I was really getting motiv uh, motivated by the entire group, you know, just everyone being there. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, just that's what really motivated me. I didn't want to hold back the group at all, so I, s I just wanted to succeed, you know, get through it, you know. And I wasn't really thinking about home. I mean, I really enjoyed it out there, you know, just getting to know people more and just the how open people were out there, you know. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that, like paddling with some of you guys you just tell me straight up what's going on like with I know some pretty personal stuff you know, family situations and whatnot you just talk about it which is awesome but I don't know whether you guys would be up for doing that at school or whether the lake helped that what do you what do you think does the lake help to clear your mind and then you can just chat or what I think the lake you know just being out in the open and it's like nothing with you electricity or any like uh, iPhones or anything like that, you know, yeah. just having no distractions out there just helps you talk and just, you're just freely open, you know, it just, it just helps you a lot. But yeah. um, what motivated you? Um, I'm going to go roughly for the same answer as you and say so the group, but in the sense of whoever was on morale during the day. So each day we had a different people doing different jobs, so we had kitchen, toilet, uh, leaders, morale, and a couple of others. And uh, so the morale people's job was to keep spirits high. And they, they did an awesome job, really, like shouting across the lake saying, keep going. It definitely quite heartfelt, wasn't it, Jared? It was. I mean, do you want to give some shout outs to some people? Yeah. I'd love to give some shout outs. Uh, I think, well, personally, Yourself, Jared, on Morel, Morel Day was a, an interesting day that day. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm going to shout out to Artie as well. Oh, yeah, Artie, he's yes. A, yeah. He's a funny, funny character, that one, but definitely keeps spirits high, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? And, um, you know, what what other things, you know, just kept spirits up other than the people on Morel, you know? Um... Food. Food was a big thing because on the first couple of days, me and Fabian cooked some pretty awful food. They're disgusting. Like, I'm talking wraps with carrot, cucumber, crisps, or chips, if you will, uh, and maybe some veggie might on top. You know, pretty vile sandwiches. And then towards the end, we started eating health, healthier foods that. I actually tasted of something that wasn't pure dirt. So just getting to camp, having a bit more food, and just fill up the uh, bod god. He's ready to go again. Yeah, um, getting to the end of camp, you know, we've just like, the, just the last paddle into the shore. I mean, what was going through your mind? I mean, I knew, I know I was like happy, motivated, but a bit sad, you know, that this, this trip has come to an end. What was going yeah. through your mind? I guess it's the sort of the same in the way that I'd really enjoyed the camp and I knew I wanted to go back to Lake Argyle at some point in my life. But 
you know, six days of kayaking, it takes a toll on your body, uh, mentally and physically. So I was, I was looking forward to that, uh, that sleep back in, back in my bed in Cormilda, and sure thing, I, I got it. Yeah, I mean, come to that last, you know, that last couple of paddles into shore. Yeah. I know in your story that you said something is pretty amazing. That, I mean, I guess this is a shout out to Bill. It's a story I mean, because oh, it is you. amazing. It is amazing. Um, yeah, oh. go read it. But um, yeah, that actually inspires me. You know, just thinking back at that. And I know when we got to camp the last day, uh, we're just relaxing and just everyone bonded. And I mean, I guess you have to call it a flop. You know, just everyone, yeah, yeah. everyone last together. Last day flop. Yeah, everyone together. Just you know, just just listening to music and that night is just. Amazing. One of the best nights, actually, if I might say myself. And yeah, mm-hmm. it's just open. Just, yeah, it's really good. And uh, the, that last couple of paddles into shore, uh, certainly thinking about my uh, South African brother, Jason, because he had his birthday on the Thursday of the camp, and uh, we saw the other group paddling, but we couldn't go and see them properly because, you know, rules and regulations and whatnot. But uh, it's good to see him now that he's a he's a 19 year old man. Uh, what uh, did you think you achieved your goals? And um, I'm gonna say yes because I certainly got to know you guys. You know, now that I'm walking around school, I get uh, shouted at quite a lot, and yeah, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not too sure. But I definitely got to know you. Yeah. Um. Something that really like inspired me at the end was, you know, just seeing we did our little, uh, we made a little circle and everyone closed their eyes and oh yeah yeah everyone just uh, still would ask questions and ask, you know, who who inspired you and they would walk you would choose three people they would walk around the circle, tap people on the head mm. you know, and, and role tap. models and things like that yeah and when you got that tap, you, how you good appre- did you feel? You felt appreciated, which is something amazing. Yeah. I'm, I know everyone got a couple taps on the head. Um, you know, it was just amazing the appreciation that you felt from the group, just knowing everyone, everyone appreciated you out there and that you did yeah. a good job. And I reckon I achieved my goals. I mean, not to brag, but I got a, at least 12 taps on the head that day. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So all in all, sum up Lake Argyle in three words. The best time, or maybe um, hope, togetherness, and resilience. I mean, everyone, everyone had hope out there. It's good, you know. Mm. Everyone came together, even though if you didn't talk to them at school much, or if you weren't really friends with them, you know, like at school, you got to learn a lot about people. And um, yeah. resilience out there. Man, I mean that that was a hard trip for everyone. I know. Yeah. I know that. I mean, even though we were the elite out squad, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we it was a bit hard for people sometimes. You just had to help people out. You know, just help them get through, motivate them if you could. You know, yeah. do the best you could because you're a family out there. And you yeah. just have to work together. So probably three words for me would be tough, experience. And I'm going to go for friendship. Friendship. Even though, you know, I'm a volunteer and your kid, like, definitely got to meet some cool people out there and people I'll never forget in the remainder of my life. So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be it from this podcast about Lake Argyle. So th- thank you all for listening. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, it was an amazing time out there. Would recommend it for anyone. And um, yeah, yeah. Just see you around school. Yeah, yeah. The boys.